Hi guys, and what we're gonna be doing today is learning how to do a line type. Now, in the beginning here, we're just going to kind of crash course, how do I make the line type? And the second part of the video is gonna be, how do I make the line type to be something more, um, we'll call it correct. Like if you're looking to actually create something that at 30 scale, the line type does a four foot line with a three foot skip, um, stuff of that nature. Um, or if you're looking to make sure your text height's a certain high size at a certain scale, whatever it may be. But Honestly, creating a line type, just the creating the line type part is easy. So let's go ahead and do just that. So right now I have a little line here with some initials in it. And uh, I'm just going to create a line type right out of this. So honestly, it's easy to do. You're going to go to Express. You're going to go to Tools. And then you're going to go to Make a Line Type. Now you're going to save this line type somewhere intuitive. Um, now again, if you watch the CAD Standards video, Technically, line types should go under the support folder. Um, I'm going to overwrite the one I have there now. So it's under my support folder. There we go. This way, when AutoCAD loads, it will automatically load it. Um, now, right now, what it's asking me for is my line type name. So I'm going to type in my initials here, BCB, and then I'm going to hit enter. Then it's going to ask me for description. Now, you don't have to enter a description if you don't want to, but Again, I'm just going to hit enter because, again, not a big deal. Now, here's the hard part. You're going to select the starting point, right? So I'm going to want to start from the end point here. And I'm going to end not here, but here. And the reason we're selecting there is, is because once this gap is over, I wanted to restart this line, not put another line, then restart my line. You'll see that in a moment. So now it's asking me to select the objects. So I'm going to select here and there, select my text. Now, notice what's happening here. It won't let me select the text. Why? Well, it's because it's M text. So giving it one a quick explode will allow it to be single line text and allow me to make a line type out of it. So line types and M text don't mix. Make sure you use D text. So let's go over it again. Express tools make line type save it yeah sure now again give it a name bcb enter give it a description you don't have to but you can if you want hit enter give the starting point perfect end point of here to the end point here again not here here then select the line then select your text and voila hit enter and you have a line type it's really that easy so now when i put my line in I can select my new line type here, go to line, and there we go. Now, what sometimes confuses people, and uh, even myself sometimes, is if you look at it, if I try to line this up by eye, this line here is never the length of this first line. And really what it's doing is it averages it over the entire line. But this line here in between will always be the correct size. Now, if you were to have selected here, and then the end point here, instead of here, where we selected, you would then have a longer line in the middle because it would have drawn a line and then drawn the exact same length line again and then put BCB. So again, that is the real quick, easy way to draw a simple line type that just includes just lines or just text. Um, honestly, not too bad and not too hard, right? Now, let's say, for instance, I want to draw something like I just explained. I want to draw a line, not using the BCB line type there. I want to draw a line that has a six foot line. And then I'm going to zoom out a bit. And then I want to have a, uh, let's say a three foot gap. And then another six foot line. So you can kind of see the different parts of this line. So I'm going to delete out this one. This is supposed to be the gap. So. And let's test it. Let's make sure everything's perfect. So I always double check everything before I do anything here. Make sure my length is six. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So now what scale do we want this to be at? Right now I drew it exactly six feet and three feet. And if my scale was one to one, I would be fine. All right. So if I made this a line type right now, make line type, save. I'm just going to, yeah, we'll save right over the old one. That's fine. Sure. Um, now we're going to call this real quick. I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to give it uh, maybe lane or something like that. Enter. 
enter um, starting point end point here to the end point here again not this line but end point here and let's select there hit enter and now you'll see one called lane so when I draw it at one to one it's exactly what I need it's a six foot line with a three foot skip not a bad deal but when I change it to 30 scale or whatever scale you're trying to get it to work at you're gonna notice a few issues so I'm gonna create the scale real quick I should have it in here already but it didn't so no big deal I'll create the scale hit OK now as soon as I regen when I change it here you're gonna notice that line is gonna go solid the reason being is the line not long enough to generate the line type now and now to generate the line type I really really have to drag it far now at 30 scale if you notice this is not three feet the reason being is it's taking what you designed it at and multiplying it by 30 so what we need to do is basically divide it by 30 and then make the line type and then it'll look good at 30 scale so let's take a look and see if it works right so let's scale it let's select our lines let's pick a base point right there and I'm gonna do 1 divided by 30 I'm gonna type it in just like that 1 over 30 and I'm gonna hit enter and you'll see it's gonna shrink the line down quite a bit there it is right there so now let's make the line type so go to express tools make line type again just overriding the same one we're just playing here um, again give it a name so I'm gonna call this uh, lane 2 or maybe we'll call it lane 30 for lane 30 scale, right? All right, description, who cares? Uh, give it a start point right here, end point here. Again, not the end point here, the end point here. Select the line, hit enter. Now let's put the line in, there's lane 30. So now when I put lane 30 in here, again, you're not noticing anything, right? It's gotta get bigger because remember, lane 30, Remember, it's got to get at least, look, it's only two feet. It ain't going to work, right? You got to get it at least a few feet long before you get to generate it. Because, again, you got a six-foot line and a three-foot skip. So you at least have to be a few. So now, if you pull off a quick kind of kind of garbage dimension, but look at that, it's three feet. And that's six. So, again, it's not really about just creating a line type. It's also about kind of getting the right look when you're done. Now... With that all being said, there's one other type of line type that we can create. And I kind of call it a complex line type, but all it is is a line type with a shape. Now that shape can be anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a simple uh, circle here and I'm going to give it a diameter of 0.1. And the reason I'm using 0.1 again is because my text height that I use is 0.1. So I kind of have a, a general idea on how big this circle is going to be when it goes to 30 scale. It's going to be a diameter of 3, right? Because it's 0.1 here multiplied by 30 when I scale it to 30. There you go. So let's add some features to this. Uh, we're going to make a smiley face. Why not? And I'm going to drive all the people who ever, you know, it's got to be perfectly symmetrical. They're going to go nuts right now because I am not going to care at all. Yeah, you know what? It's a bowling ball. That's what it is. All right. <laughs> All right, so we got our circle here, and we got our pieces. So I'm going to draw a line now, and I'm going to go from the quadrant of the circle. Now, again, this is going to be whatever times the scale. So if I go 50 feet here, it's going to be 50 times 30, and that's going to have to be a really long line to generate this bowling ball here. So um, I'm going to go maybe, let's go 0.25. Now, when you multiply that by 30, it's still going to be a pretty long line. So maybe we'll go half of that. All right, so we have our line leading up. We have our line leaving. Now, I'm going to put a line leaving it as well from the quadrant. Um, again, just as you know, I have to set that gap right. It still kind of works the same way. Now, we're going to go to Express now, and we're going to go to Tools, but this time we're going to go to Make Shape. We're not going to make a line type yet. we got to make a shape first, and then we have to insert set shape. So let's go to Make Shape. And again, shape files need to be saved in the same support folder. Um, again, if you haven't watched that Managing CAD Like a Boss 2.0, um, give it a look because it kind of explains why I'm putting things in the support folder here. Because when AutoCAD loads, you want it to have this shape. 
bowling. There we go. Save. Now, enter the name of the shape. I'm going to call it ball. And I have to remember this because I'm going to have to insert this shape later. So remember, ball. Enter. Enter resolution 128. We're going to leave that alone. We're not going to touch it. We're just going to hit enter. Now, it's going to ask us for the insertion point of the set ball. And that insertion point, you're going to want to select the center. I know it's a round object. But really, that insertion point, you're going to want it to be the end point of this line right here. And you'll see that why in a moment. And I'm going to select all those pieces of that bowling ball there. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, it's going to put the bowling ball in, uh, but not before I have to put the other piece in. So I'm going to type in shape now. And again, shape name, ball. And you'll see it's going to put a bowling ball in, right? So I'm going to erase out this piece now. And I'm going to type in ball now. Or sorry, I'm going to type in shape. Then I'm going to type in ball. And I'm going to put the bowling ball in. And now you know why I selected that endpoint. So I'm going to go to the endpoint there. Perfect. And then it's going to ask me for the height. I'm just going to hit enter. And rotation, enter. And it's going to put it right back in. So now I have half of this line type done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to express and now go to our favorite command, make line type. And this one's going to be called bowling. Why not? Hit save. And we're going to select, again, select a line type name. We're going to type in, you know, bowling. Enter. And then for description, we can have a space in here. So you notice when I hit space, it does not do an enter. We'll hit enter, bowling ball. And again, line definition. So we're going to select the end here. Or sorry, yeah, from there to the end point here. Again, not here. To the end point here. I want that shape to start over right now. That line to come right after this one. So it's going to go line, bowling ball, line. So not this line, though. So hit there. Now we're going to select the objects. We're going to select that and the bowling ball. And we're going to hit enter. And now, honestly, this line type is done. So if we look here and we go to bowling now, and I put my line in. Again, it's got to be long enough to generate that bowling ball. There it is. Now, if I did my homework right, that bowling ball is three feet tall. Exactly. Again, because I made it 0.1 there, multiplied by the 30 scale the drawing is currently set at right here in the bottom right hand corner, you can kind of set the bowling ball size, and you see it right there. It is three. So if I put some M text in right here, and I put my initials, and I set my text height to three, and I moved it right next to it. Look at that. It's the exact same height. So again, not too bad on creating a line type. You just really have to kind of take into account your scale. So again, that was how to create a line type, both simple and complex. But there's one more thing to do. Let's go to Windows E real quick, and let's take a look at the uh, standards folder here for AIMCAD. So if you notice right now, we have a lot of line types all together. So we have this bowling line and this bowling shape. So let's say we want to combine them. I want to put bowling into the AIM line. So if I open bowling, so I'm going to click on bowling, and uh, honestly, I'm going to open it up, and uh, there it is, right there. So I'm going to copy this out. Now, the key to this working is, is this bowling SHP and SHX stay in this folder with it. So I'm going to hit copy here, and I'm going to close, and I'm going to open up AIM now. And you'll see I have a whole bunch of different stuff in there, right? I kept editing and adding to it. And I'm going to throw my line type in there. Perfect. And then I'm going to click Save. So now what will happen is when it loads, it just loads one central line type file, and it will pull everything in. So here's all of our different line types that we added. And as you can see, it has them all. It has lane, BCB, all of our messing around. Now, if you get really good at creating line types, you'll be able to do it like so. You'll be able to honestly, like look at this one here, you can easily just copy this guy out, paste him in, and you could change the name. So we can say, hello, and we'll leave that the same. And you can honestly, so whenever you see a positive number, that's basically a line, that's penned down, all right? So if I wanted to make this line 0.125, 
and then I wanted to make the gap, let's say 0.25, I can, and that's how I would do it. So now the gap or the line is gonna be 0.125 and the negative numbers are basically the pen up. So that's no line, that's a gap. And you have negative 0.25 in here. And you know what? If you wanted to put a dot in here, you could put a dot with a zero and then put another negative 0.25 in here. Hit save. And now the next time you load AutoCAD, you'll have this new fun line type that you created with not even using AutoCAD. All you did was use the common technique used to create simple AutoCAD shapes. Now you can see the ones with text in it are a bit more complicated right here. And you can kind of see all the scaling and everything for those. As well as, you know, you see the height of the text, 0.1. See, BCB, 0.1, perfect. Um, but looking here, look at the bowling ball one. See where it says ball, bowling? So the shape file's name is bowling. The shape is called ball. So that's these files right here. Hence why I can get rid of this file now and get rid of bowling, but I can't get rid of these because my line type file, which is now an aim because I copied it in there, is still referencing this bowling shape file. Now, if this shape file is not in the same location as your line type file, you can path to it by just putting a path in front of it like so, but that's really up to you. Um, I honestly just keep them all together under the support file. So I'm gonna click save now, and when I close out of here, close out of here, and I'm gonna close out of AutoCAD and come back in, and you'll see all my line types are gonna be there. All right, we're loading again. There we go, we're all loaded. Let's go into model space here. And look at that, there's our line types. So now, if we go to LT, and we go to load, and we'll go over to our awesome uh, AIMCAD folder here. CAD standards, AIMCAD, support, line. And you'll see them all right there. We can load them all, hit okay. And there they all are. And more importantly, we'll test out the bowling one because we did combine that one and there it is. Now again, this is at one to one. So as soon as I change it to 30 and I add that 30 scale, you're gonna again notice the fact that it's going to change quite a bit. So let's do a regen. There you go. And you can kind of see how scale directly affects your line types. So again, one thing I didn't have to do is I had to load the line type when it opened because my template doesn't have that line type in it. So sometimes it's crucial to open up your DWT and load any line types you might want in it. I tend to keep the line types out of my, dot, my template files though, as it just kind of clouds them up and eventually I'm gonna purge some of the stuff out of it. So again, I'm Fearless Leader, Brandon, whatever you wanna call me, and uh, you guys subscribe and like the video below if it helped you or in any way assisted you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And again, if you guys ever want any other videos or if there's anything I'm missing, uh, let me know and I'll make sure to add it to the channel. So everybody have a good night and thank you for watching.